Welcome to a new daily top ask reddit video. Today's topic. Gamers of reddit, what are some underrated games do you think more people should play? Screech Eat. It's a split screen multiplayer game that you play online. Every character is invisible, and the only way you can kill each other is by looking at each other's perspective, hence Screech Eat. Also some really funny additions into the game, for example. A mode where every sound is replaced with an Australia going bugger. Cheap and hilarious. This really is a great game with friends. Awesome I'll try it once I get some of those. For me it's got to be an old Xbox game called Metal Arms. It's a bit old now but it's the shit. They were going to do a sequel but the company was bought out or bust or something. Loved that game on GameCube, so much fun in split screen. One of the first games I played with my son when he was around 7 or 8. Good memories. Custom Robo on the GameCube. I really wish Nintendo would make a new Custom Robo for the Switch. Custom Robo feels like the perfect game for online play but it released when that wasn't really a thing. Custom Robo and F-Zero could both use a revival. My Summer Car. It's like a car driving simulator that takes place in IOT's Finland. You build your car, in the meanwhile you do dumb shit driving around and interacting with all the drunk men in the map, you can get drunk too. Kinda trashy game but still fun. R forward slash my summer car. The game is amazing simply because of how absurd it is. Want to drink and drive? Don't bother to install the passenger seat, just put the beer there instead. Leave off the windshield to chuck bottles out the car. Drive a tractor to town to buy frozen pizza. Pee on a moose. Scream P-E-R-K-E-L-E at people while you pump sewage. Race people on a moped. Get hit by a train. Enjoy a sauna. It's an experience. Leave off the windshield to chuck bottles out the car. You shouldn't do this anymore. The creator added a feature pretty recently where if you drive without a windshield, a bee might hit you in the face. You are allergic to bees so your vision goes dark and you die. The achievement for peeing on the sauna heater is the funniest thing I can think of in gaming. Keshi. It's kind of a fucked up dystopia game that takes place in some barren hellhole. Not your typical AAA titles. More PC and independent. Lower budget. But as a gaming experience, I think it captures the very essence of what an organic gaming experience to be. The game itself is kind of this fucked up scenario and places you in the middle of it. Rise or fall it almost feels like it's up to fate. But the cool thing is that your player gets stronger with repetition. So as long as you're alive, you've got a shot. Even if you're a bleeding, limbless, and crawling great distances starving. A scenario all too common in Keshi. Keshi is awesome, especially considering it was mostly done by a single dude over the course of 12 years, he is working on Keshi 2 BTW. You'll like the game if you don't like being held by the hand in games. It's an extremely rewarding role-playing game that lets you basically do everything with all the consequences involved. You might end up enslaved. Or it's a survivalist colony managing game that reminded me of RimWorld at times. The only thing I found limiting is the replayability. I mean the map is huge and it will take you a long time until you have explored everything, but when you have the game is basically over. ITT a bunch of highly rated games that are people's favorites. I hear this ID game portal is very underrated but really good. I've heard this ID game called Skyrim is pretty good. I've seen Shadow of the Colossus twice, now. A game so underrated, I'm able to own both a PS2 Greatest Hits copy and a PS4 Remaster copy. A game so underrated that people constantly still talk about it 10 plus years after it released. Yep. Here's one that's actually underrated, if you're interested. The Avarim games have perhaps the best stories I've encountered. The series begins with you being cast into a continent-sized cavern beneath the surface of a fantasy world. This place of Avarim is where everyone who doesn't fit in is unceremoniously deposited by the Empire, the government that rules the entire planet. Criminals, misfits, species other than humans, and even just random individuals are thrown into this pit, which is lit by a glowing fungus that takes up much of the sky. As you explore and learn both the history of this place and the current state of affairs, you have the choice to embroil yourself in a conspiracy against the surface, become a champion of the people who have made their lives underground, or simply try to escape.
As the second installment begins, you learn that an ancient species used to call the caves home and they are anything but pleased about having their ancestral lands transformed into a prison. Furthermore, it turns out that the Empire has been committing some rather horrific crimes against these creatures, for which your people have been blamed. Once again, you have a choice in how to deal with these beings, with many decisions having unexpected and, literally, game-changing consequences. I could go on there are half a dozen titles in the series, after all but part of the fun is in discovering the rich narrative tapestry that gets woven before your eyes. Each sequel builds on what the previous ones laid out, and every one of the games has enough content to keep a person interested for dozens of hours. The graphics aren't the best by today's standards, I'll grant you but you'd be hard pressed to find a deeper or more fascinating story. TL, Doctor, Overham is a unique fantasy series with as much depth as the Lord of the Rings. Split Second A very good racing game with the added element of trying to destroy the other drivers with explosions. P.S. You wrecked yourself. Came here to post this. That game is amazing, my favorite racing game ever. Oh, you are leading the race. It would be a shame if a collapse to fucking damn on your ass. I.I.R.C. You can find it on the Xbox Game Pass. Shame the studios which made it ended up being shut down. I've talked about this game before, but I think it's very underrated for such an amazing game. Back in 2003 Bethesda came out with an RPG called Pirates of the Caribbean. The game is not at all connected with the film series, aside from a few names here and there. Basically it was a pretty large world full of islands that you could explore as this guy named Nathaniel Hawke. You could choose what kind of pirate you wanted to be based on your actions, like you could be a smuggler, a trader, a bloodthirsty swordsman, etc. They gave you skill points as you leveled up to put into things that would help you become the character you wanted to be. You could hire crews for your ships that would also fight at your side as you explored the islands and at sea. On the islands there were dungeons and caverns to explore where you would fight skeletons and get treasures and really great weapons. The ship battles were fun, but they also gave you the option of avoiding them or doing them in a less involved way if that was not your thing. These battles would either be with other pirates or a country that you were not friendly with at the moment because diplomacy also played a major role in your character. There were quite a few ships you could choose from too, and if you were a smuggler or trader you would rely on these ships to move cargo from one island to the other. There was a main story of sorts, but it was a pretty open world filled with side quests that allowed you to do your own thing. My biggest complaint was that the controls were a bit clunky, but you got used to them. I loved that game very much, and revisit it every few years, but not a lot of people I know have ever played it or even heard about it. Here is a trailer of some of the gameplay if you're curious. Sounds a lot like Sid Meier's Pirates. I accidentally bought that game while trying to get Sid Meier's Pirates as a kid and was so pissed. Mercenaries, Playground of Destruction. It was GTA in North Korea. You could hijack anything and destroy any building and call in airstrikes. Truly ahead of its time. Never could beat the final mission, though. Regardless, amazing. I never played the first one but I did play World in Flames and I thought it was still to this day some of the most fun I've ever had. Too bad we never saw a third a game come out. I played both, and I honestly think the first one is better. The graphics aren't as good as World in Flames, but I think World in Flames was just too easy. Riddick, Escape from Butcher Bay. Was expecting the typical steaming turd from a movie-based game. Turned out to be surprisingly really good, 90% on Metacritic. It's because VIN Diesel doesn't fuck around, he founded a game studio so he could be part of the production and not just providing a voice. He loves that franchise and he's a fan of gaming, he wasn't about to let the first Riddick game be some shovelware bullshit. The franchise is his franchise, he tilde tilde wrote and tilde tilde ediavid tirelessly to crowdfunding for the first movie. When he achieved that, he used the profits from the first to fund his studio, making the video game, which helped stoke continued interest, which paved the way for more movies with higher budgets. The man is truly committed to the Riddick IP. Edit, a couple butt holes pointed out he didn't actually write it, which wasn't the point. Here's a detailing of some of the sacrifices VIN Diesel has made to ensure the fruition of the project he is so damn passionate about. HTTPS www.hollywoodreporter.com forward slash news Sacrifice I don't remember a lot of buzz about it. It is one of the most imaginative RTS titles in history. 
It came out late 2000, and I don't think there has been a game like it. Unlike most RTS titles, it played like a third-person RPG instead of a top-down isometric game. You personally controlled a unit, you would summon creatures and cast spells, get into direct combat with the opponent. The goal was to corrupt the altar of the enemy. You play a wizard in service of one of a pantheon of gods. The campaign is well told and imaginative you show up after a catastrophe destroyed your reality, one that you might have caused, in some ethereal realm, and the gods there try to seduce you to their side. Every mission, you can choose to serve the same god or a different one, gaining new spells and summons each time you essentially build your repertoire this way, similar to an RPG, since you keep your old selections. As war breaks out between the gods and they start dividing into factions, your options close off, until you are left serving the last god standing against a horrific foe. It has some great voice acting, Tim Curry plays this god of air who constantly insults the earth god. The game's visuals are insane, the world crafted using voxels that could show massive terrain destruction, one of the spells would transform a huge area of the map into a volcano and rain down massive flaming boulders that would break massive holes in the ground. Sadly it sold pretty poorly. It was ambitious, funny, ahead of its time. The UI really hurt the game, it's pretty awkward to play. HTTPS www.youtube.com HTTPS www.gob.com forward slash game forward slash sacrifice Sacrifice is so good, and one of the gods is basically Earthworm Jim, same publisher I think, shiny. I love this game and can definitely vouch for it. Similarly, Brutal Legend is worth a try too if you like sacrifice.